Hey, friendos. Welcome back to another episode of Washing Dishes, where today we're making chili. I'm going to break down some chuck roast, and we'll talk ingredients while I do that and do the veg prep. And then we'll talk technique and stuff as we go along. So stick around. Sorry about my voice. I just got back from a sword fighting event, and it's half gone. Um, but it's definitely chilly weather, so we're going to do that today. Enjoy! As I said, I'm going to break down some chuck roast. Uh, you could use any variety of meats. Uh, I'm using chuck because it was on sale at the grocery store, and chuck is one of my preferred chili meats. If you wanted to fancy it up, you could definitely go with like some short rib. If you wanted to budget it out a little more, you could go with like a top round or a bottom round. You're just looking for a good mix of fat and lean. You could do a mixture of multiple types of meats for a variety of texture. Honestly, yeah, do what feels good for your taste and budget, you know. Um, chili is one of those things that's honestly as simple or as complicated as you want it to be, and I'm keeping the ingredient side of things kind of in the midpoint and the technique side of things a little bit on the higher end, but it's all for a purpose, and I promise it'll taste good. So we're just breaking this down into, like, inch ish chunks it's gonna shrink a bit when we cook it you know you want it to be uh big enough that it's like texture but small enough that it fits in a spoon and once it's broken down we're gonna go ahead and get it in a bowl and get our seasonings into it onto it we're gonna start with some salt and pepper just to get us going on that one and get the kind of dry brine going there we're gonna add more of these seasonings of course as we work through the process and adjust. That's some uh, dried oregano, that we're, about a, two teaspoons of that, about a tablespoon of ground cumin, which I toasted and ground earlier, about two teaspoons of chili powder. I'm using New Mexico chili powder, and then about a tablespoon of smoked paprika. We're going to go ahead and get that just mixed nicely around. Try not to let anything escape. And then once that's all nice and mixed up, we're going to go ahead and set it aside and get going on the veg prep. And we'll talk through how we're breaking things down and why we're doing some kind of less standard techniques as we go with that. The first step in our veg prep involves snipping and cleaning out so the seeds from some dried chilies. I'm using a chili de arbol a pasilla and an ancho chili. You could, again, use any mixture of chilies that gets you a flavor and heat combination you like. But we're just stripping these of the seeds because the seeds won't break down, they won't taste good, and they're just, I don't like chewing on chili seeds. Anyway, so we're getting those out and then we're gonna snip them into smaller pieces and into a container of beef stock that we are then going to use uh, to rehydrate and soften them. To speed up that softening, we are going to use one of the marvels of the modern kitchen, the microwave. So that was about 30 seconds, and we're going to go ahead and wrap those with some cellophane and set them aside to do their thing. With the meat marinating and the chili softening, it's time to get on to the fresh veggie part of the prep. So as you can see, I'm just breaking down these chilies into big chunks and then I'm throwing them in a food processor. We're going to essentially create a chili and onion and bean paste. And we're going to do that for a couple of reasons. One, this is a super quick and easy way to break down all these, all these veggies. You could do this by hand. I'm going to do some of it by hand and I'll explain why when I get there, but this is chili. You're go. I like a kind of smoother texture in the, I don't want to like a super chunky chili. It's going to have chunks of meat and uh, tomato and the, and some of the onions, but mostly I want to use this paste to both create and thicken the broth. Adding the beans to this paste accomplishes two things. One, 
beans provide spectacular texture and moisture and thickening power. And two, it eliminates the sometimes objectionable texture of whole beans. I am not a fan of sneaking things into your food to get people to eat things they might not like. I am, however, a fan of adding those ingredients in a way that is less objectionable if that's good, if that's feasible. So we're making a chili onion bean paste, and that is going to be both the backbone and thickener and broth kind of base for our chili. The veggies for this are down in the description. It's some pasilla chilies, some Anaheim, some serranos and jalapenos, uh, and then a couple of onions and a big can of black beans. And we'll get to the tomatoes when we get to the tomatoes. If you noticed, I cut the seeds and uh, ribs out of the chilies. You could leave them in, but again, chili seeds don't really have much flavor and they have a bad texture. And I'm not looking to make this crazy powerful. I am, however, leaving all of the stems and seeds inside of the Serranos. Uh, because I feel like it. And that's where I'm going to get a lot of my heat from. And then the onions were just cutting into big chunks. I'm leaving half uh, not in this mixture. So that we can use it uh, to deglaze the pan later. I'll show you And with everything in the food processor, we're just going to blitz it into a paste. Once it's, once we've broken down the veggies, we'll go ahead and add the beans and then let it go again. And then we'll add the chilies that we've been soaking and get those mixed in as well. All in all, like I said, it's going to form a really wonderful kind of base for our chili. And it's going to be absolutely delicious. Thicken the mixture and just have a really wonderful velvety texture throughout. I'm starting the pan off with a little splash of vegetable oil and then some beef tallow that I had floating around from a previous project. You don't have to use beef tallow. You can just use veg oil. It's fine. Don't worry. With the tallow melted, we're going to go ahead and start getting our beef into the pan. Um, so normally, this is not the kind of pan I would use for this. I would use like a cast iron Dutch oven. Uh, but this is the pan that I have that I could use and you all could see what was going on in the pan. So bear with me. It's going to work fine, don't worry. But if you have like a cast iron Dutch oven or an enameled Dutch oven or something heavier duty, it would be even better. But we're just going to get as much as we can in the pan without crowding it too much. We're not looking to get this like super crispy and everything. We're just looking to develop some nice browning and some nice fond in the bottom of our pan. And we're going to do this in a couple of batches. Whoop. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. All right, we're good. So we're going to go ahead and let that get browned up, and then we will get on to where we go from there. It's it's deglazing. After we brown everything, we're going to deglaze. But watch the browning. It's, it's nice footage. With our moment of zen over for the moment, we're going to go ahead and clear out the pan. And I off screen or off camera, I should say, diced up so the other half of that onion. And we're going to use that diced onion to deglaze our pan. We're just going to add it to the pan, a little bit of salt and pepper just to kind of get the moisture and flavors going. Stir it around, scrape up this, use it to scrape up the stuff that's in the bottom of the pan. And then we're going to go ahead and add our tomato paste. We're using, I'm going to use... I'm making a lot of chili. I'm using an entire can of tomato paste. Again, exact measurements in the description. And we're just going to cook that around until it starts to go from kind of that bright red to more of a reddish coppery brown. And we cook off the little bit of like metallic flavor that canned tomatoes always have. 
once we've reached that point, we're going to go ahead and deglaze. I'm using some rye whiskey because that's what I had lying around, and I like some rye whiskey in my, whis in my whiskey. I like some rye whiskey in my chili. Look, anytime you're using a tomato product and you have a chance to deglaze with alcohol, I strongly recommend doing so. There is a chemical reaction between tomatoes and alcohol that produces a lot of complexity in flavors. You're cooking off the vast, vast, vast majority, and it's just adding flavor. It's not adding any real booziness. So, okay, I'll admit the chili and bean paste doesn't look super appetizing. I get it. I get it. But we're going to go ahead and stir that in. And we're going to have, that's going to be our base, like our, our rich full base for our chili. Uh, and we're just going to cook this a little bit, just kind of cook out a, a fair amount of the moisture and really concentrate those flavors. And we're going to have to let that go over like kind of a medium ish, medium high. You're going to want to keep an eye on it so it doesn't scorch. Uh, but yeah, you're just, we're just going to stir that together and then simmer it for a little while until it starts to cook out all of that moisture. Oh, it's looking so good. This is going to be really delicious chili, I promise. I keep saying that like you won't believe me, but I've this is one of my favorite chili recipes. I've made it a lot of times. I know I keep making my favorites. If you want me to try some other recipes, maybe some of your favorites, drop that into the description or drop that in the comments and let me know what you would like to see me cook. Once this has had a chance to cook down, we're going to go ahead and add all of the beef we pulled out earlier, along with any juices that may have come out of it. And we're just going to stir all of that together, get everything nice and coated. And now, so the beef is browned, but not cooked. It's going to have to go, th this is going to have to go once all of the ingredients are in it for a couple of hours. So I'm just adding, that's the beef stock that was with the chilies. And then I'm going to add one large can of uh, diced tomatoes. I'm using San Marzano's. And we're going to go ahead and let that mix together and cook covered for about an hour. And then we'll come in and check on it. While it's cooking for that hour covered, I am going to come by and stir it every 10 to 20 minutes. Just again to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom too badly. And at our first check-in, things look good. Nothing to report. So let's continue on and let it go a little bit longer. And check-in number two, it's been going for about an hour and a half covered. We're gonna go ahead and give it a stir, adjust some seasonings, and then we're gonna go ahead and add our second big can of diced tomatoes. We're adding them in separate increments because we want them to have different flavor and texture components. The ones that went in first, are going to be more stewed, broken down further. They'll really become more part of the sauce and much softer and more earthy. And the ones we added later will become a little more rich, or sorry, a little, stay a little more bright, a little more, you know, solid in texture. And it just gets us some nice heterogeneity, some nice variety in flavor and texture. And that adds some really nice complexity and when we've got good complexity, food is interesting and we want to keep eating more of it because we keep taking bites and going, ooh, what's that little bit more? I can't identify it. I got to try it. Try it again. Let's try it again. And you just keep, you can't stop eating it. So with all of the ingredients added and the seasonings adjusted to my personal preferences, we're going to go ahead and let this go for another hour, hour and a half until everything is nice and tender and silky and delicious. Well, the chili's been going for just about two hours now. I just wanted to go check my phone that's not in my pocket because my phone is you guys. Um, so it's gotten a little chillier. I've put on the hoodie. I'm gonna chop up some cilantro and some green onions uh, just to use as like toppings. And then I think we're just about ready to taste. Chili, the toppings can make the chili, so definitely do what you like. Uh, I love cilantro and green onion. I usually do some cheese and like chips or baguette. Uh, I know a lot of people like raw white onion or sour cream. Not my personal preference, but delicious if that's your thing. 
I'm going to grab some uh, limes, which, I mean, limes make everything better. But yeah, I'd say we're just minutes away from tasting this chili, so let's get on to it. Yeah, this looks spectacular. Let's go ahead and plate it on up. Let's do a little final seasoning and see how it is. That's better. Really makes things pop more. All right, let's go ahead and get this served up. Beautiful. Mostly just trying not to splatter it between the bowl and the pan, but... A little bit more beef and tomato. Beautiful. Perfect. And then, like I said, I like cheese. Freshly shredded would be best, but... I've got leftover pre-shred from camping trip taco night, so I hope you'll forgive me. So we'll go a little bit of cheese, sprinkle some green onion on, a little cilantro. Nice chunk of bread. And then I think we're just about ready to taste. Let me get y'all a picture of this real quick before I destroy it, though. There we go. With the gratuitous food porn shot out of the way, let's give it a taste. It's very hot. But it's got that beautiful, like, earthy beefy richness from the cumin and the beef and the tallow nice and spicy the like the dried chilies really add a wonderful amount of both that earthiness and the spice and then the fresher chilies the green chilies add a lot of brightness and kind of reinforce and give like variety and complexity to the flavor it's delicious let's get some with the toppings yeah Mmm. Mmm. So good. All right. I'm going to go have dinner. I hope the rest of you have enjoyed this episode. I've certainly enjoyed making it. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your time zone. Check out these videos here. Check out my socials down in the description. I'm streaming a lot more often right now because I have some extra free time on my hands. So check me out there at twitch.tv slash wash in the wind or, you know, the socials in the description. Thanks very much. We'll catch you on the next episode of Washing Dishes.